Hey guys, Mike Builds, welcome back to the channel. So basically guys, what we have here is a solar charge controller, but there's something different about this solar charge controller. It actually has two inputs as well as two outputs. And what that allows you to do is install this in your camper van or RV and actually use the engine's alternator to charge 12 volt, 24, 36, and 48 volt batteries, as well as solar power stations. So let's open this thing up and take a quick look at everything, kind of go over what it does and then do some testing. And this is from a company called eTaker. I think this is the unit itself. So there you go, you got the Pro Alternator and Solar Charge Controller for portable power stations and backup batteries. And it will do 1000 watts max. There's what the unit looks like. So on this side, we have two inputs. One of them is the alternator input. That's where you're gonna connect your alternator. And it has a 12 to 30 volt working voltage. The next one's actually gonna be your solar input. So you have 18 to 60 volt. And the right here is gonna be your outputs. So you can connect 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery systems. And then right here is like their proprietary connector. If you have one of their power stations, you can take this and run it directly to their power station. So something like this is gonna allow you to pretty much charge your batteries off your vehicle's alternator or off a solar panel, just like you normally would anyways. The reason that'd be useful is if you install this in a van with a bunch of batteries, normally you cannot just connect your 12 volt batteries directly to the alternator. Because what can happen is the batteries can pull so many amps, you will actually more than likely damage your alternator trying to do that. So what this allows you to do is act as a charge controller between your alternator and your batteries on board for your solar power equipment and not fry your alternator. This also has Bluetooth, so you can actually go in there and adjust the charge current for all your different devices. It would also allow you to install a 48 volt solar power system on your camper van or RV or whatever and still be able to charge it off your vehicle's charging system. So that's really cool, very interesting. It kind of seems like it'll kind of do everything you need it to do as far as charging batteries. Here's what's in the other box. It looks like you get some MC4 connectors to connect to the charger to plug in your solar panel. Panel, you get a 60 amp fuse. So this is what you're actually gonna connect to the alternator or the battery of your vehicle going into the unit. And you also get some eyelets and some screws to mount it as well as some, a little bit of heat shrink. Here's the electrical harness. So this will let you actually run it in the vehicle and route it however you want. That way you can run this cable from your battery to the actual charger itself and then wire it however you want in your setup. Everyone's setup's different. So this is probably more than enough wire for what most people will need. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all connected up so we can start testing it. And then I'm also gonna download the app so we can see exactly what settings we can change in this thing and kind of just mess around with it. It's also got a little cooling fan right here so that's really awesome this thing feels really nice that's what the bottom looks like and it's all aluminum so that will help dissipate any sort of heat buildup you get and then right here you have some status leds you have a power button and then you have whatever that is but i didn't see that cable in the box so not really sure what that's for i'll have to check the manual so this is primarily going to be used for people who have camper vans camper truck setups rvs and things like that where you also want to have a solar power system and it's going to take the job of your charge controller as well now obviously if you need more solar input you can add more charge controllers, but this is gonna be the main function of this is gonna to be to charge all your batteries, charge your solar power stations, and be able to run off your vehicle's alternator while you're driving. So that's really awesome. We're gonna go ahead and get all the wiring hooked up and I will show y'all exactly how to do that. It's pretty simple. So this port, like we said before, is your alternator input. You're gonna take your alternator cable. One end has matching terminal links. The other end has a long negative and a short positive because you need to add this fuse. So this fuse holder is gonna go right there and then you're gonna have an equal length cable and this is gonna to go to the battery side of everything. This is gonna to connect to the unit in this side. So pretty simple, just positive right here, negative right here. It's marked on the cover. I do wish it was marked right here as well, because really it only shows it on the cover, but do be aware of that. I will say the terminals they did use on this thing is very nice. They're very beefy and they look very robust and there's plenty of contact area for your lugs. As you can see, you could even add bigger lugs. There's so much room. Next, we're gonna connect our set of MC4s. This is gonna allow us to plug in our solar panel. And we're gonna do that on the solar side of the unit. Same thing, pay attention to your polarity. There we go, just like that. We're also gonna go ahead and throw our fuse on. That way this is ready to go. The fuse holder and the cables, everything in this thing's really nice. For this price point, you really do get some nice components, which I feel good about because if this is installed in a camper or RV and you're really depending on it, you don't want it to feel cheap and give you issues or burn something up. It's definitely not what you want happening. Nice. And with the fuse added, these actually have equal length ends now. They do put bigger eyelets on this side to connect to your battery or alternator. I'm gonna go straight to the battery with this. That's what they say in the manual. But I do believe you could go to your alternator as well. Just make sure you do your research on that. The last thing we need to make is a battery harness. This is gonna go from the actual charge controller to our battery. So I have a little bit of six gauge wire here. I'm gonna throw some ring terminals on each end connect it to the unit and start testing it. We got the eTaker F1000 all set up, ready to use, including our battery wires. Just for demonstrations, we have our 100 amp hour 12 volt battery connected. 
I just got the unit connected to the app. The audio, it was kind of a pain to get it to connect because it's a little bit confusing because in the manual, all you get is pictures, but essentially this puts out a Wi-Fi signal. You pick it up with the app, then you go to your home Wi-Fi in the app, connect to it, and all of a sudden it worked. So if I need to do a whole separate video on that to show you how to do that, if you guys are having trouble, just let me know because it took me about 20 minutes to figure it out, but now we got it to work. So now I'm gonna go through some of the settings and talk about what we can actually do with this thing. And I have no idea, so you guys are learning with me. So we have this battery right here. This is gonna act as the starting battery. So this would be, pretend like it's inside of your car. And this would be the battery that's directly charged off your alternator. That's where these wires are going. So this is going to be your input into the unit. And then the battery we're gonna be charging is gonna be this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery right here. It's 100 amp hours. And pretty much pretend this whole setup would be installed in your van. In a later video, we're actually gonna fully install this in something, but just for this video, just to kind of show this thing off a little bit, I wanna do a little bit of testing. So the first test we're gonna do is we're gonna take power from that battery and put it into this battery as if we're using the alternator to charge the battery. And all we have to do to do that is make sure our alternator port is on, make sure our DC port is on, and then we're gonna to go to alternator charging. So under alternator charging, you can pick your starting voltage. So if you want your vehicle to be running at a certain voltage first, that's what you would set. So basically below this voltage, you cannot pull any power out of that battery. So to show you guys what I mean, I went ahead and flipped the run switch right there. I set it to 13.5. You can also limit your charging power at 500 watts, that's the max and charging current. So you can limit it on this page. So as you can see, it's not gonna work because the voltage is too low in our battery. If you flip over to a DC port, this is gonna be the actual voltage going to your lithium battery. So you can set it all the way from 12 volts up to 60 volts. So for 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt systems. So for a 12 volt battery, the highest you'd ever wanna go is like, I'd say like 14.4 to 14.6. We'll just do 14.5, that's fine. Here you can actually pick the current. So on the other page, it was the max current you could pull, but this one's gonna be where you actually set how much current you actually wanna charge up to 40 amps. Pre-charge, basically what that does is if your battery's voltage, the battery you're trying to charge, gets below the threshold there, it's gonna trickle charge the battery in order to get above that, and then it takes over here. So as long as your battery never gets below that, it's going to use these settings. But if your battery does get below that, it's gonna use the setting right there. So do keep that in mind. So we've selected our current, we've selected our voltage we want. I'd also like to point out, you can't make any changes while it's in run mode, so you must turn the run mode off. That's why the 14.5 didn't stick. We're just gonna leave it on 14. We're gonna go back over to the alternator port. I'm gonna set my starting voltage a lot lower since we're just using a battery for testing purposes. We'll just do 12.5. So now, basically, if the voltage is above 12.5, it's gonna allow us to charge the battery. We have that set. We have our DC port set. So the charging parameters we just changed. I'm gonna go back over here. Now we can turn it into run mode. And there we go, the unit is now running, so we are pulling 172 watts from our starter battery. Obviously, you wouldn't want to be doing that without your alternator running. We're putting 164 of those watts directly into our lithium battery. So the power flow is going from that battery to this battery. The next thing we're going to demonstrate is going to be the solar input. So we have our alternator connected here. We're also going to plug in some solar panels here. Remember, you cannot go over 60 volts, so measure your solar panel input before you connect it. I have this going out to three 100 watt panels outside, and all three of those add up to just below 60 volts, so we'll be plenty safe. There isn't a lot of sun out right now, so we're not gonna get a ton of power coming in, but this will show how we can combine solar and our charging system battery in order to double up the power going into the battery that we're trying to charge. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that up. If we come to the app, as y'all can see, we have 57.9 volts coming in from our solar port. So now that we have a voltage there, we can go to the solar port tab. We have already selected a solar input, so it should start charging on its own. Actually, no, we have to hit run. And there we go. As y'all can see, we're generating 25 watts of solar. We're putting 23 watts into the batteries. There's really not a whole lot of sun out, so we're not gonna be generating a ton off of solar, but that would be the equivalent of if you had this all set up in your van and you had some solar panels on the roof, you would now be charging your lithium battery off of your roof panels. While we have that running, we can go ahead and turn our alternator port on with this switch and all the same settings that we set before, as long as we didn't mess with any of those, it should all still be the same. And there we go. Now we're using alternator power and solar power in order to charge our batteries. And that right there is the biggest reason why you'd want to run this on your camper and your RV and your bus and all that stuff. You're using two forms of power to charge one battery. There you guys go. It's working perfect. All right, next we're going to swap our 12 volt battery for a 48 volt battery. And I'll demonstrate how we can do all the same things off a 48 volt battery because some people might be running that. A lot of people are gonna be running 12 volt, but if you're running a lot bigger appliances, you may be using a 48 volt system. And it's really awesome because this is compatible with that as well. And with our battery completely disconnected, but still have our starting system battery connected, the unit is gonna stay on. 
So I believe as long as you have power coming in one of these ports, the unit will remain running. So that's awesome. Here we have a VAT rear 48 volt, 100 amp hour server rack battery. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing connected up. Okay, we got our 48 volt battery connected and turned on. And that even has a display on it, so that's kind of cool. So now in our charging section, we're on DC port charging. We're gonna click 14 and we're gonna bump this all the way up to 54 volts. You can do up to 58.4 on a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. We'll do 54, we'll do 54.5, that's fine. So now we're configured to charge a 48 volt power bank. And that's the only setting you need to change in order to charge a 48 volt solar power system. Everything else can remain the same. We're gonna turn our solar panels on that are still connected and we're gonna hit run. And there we go, just like that, we are charging from our alternator port and we're charging from our solar port and we're putting 288 watts into our 48 volt battery. It's just that easy guys, that's awesome. Okay, the next feature we're gonna demonstrate is there's actually a way you can transfer power from your main battery, from your solar battery, I should say, to your car battery. So let's say you go camping somewhere and your car battery dies for whatever reason. If you have this system connected, you can actually push power from this battery right here to your main car battery. So I went ahead and enabled that. So now we have power flowing from our 48 volt battery and it's actually pushing it into the vehicle's battery. So you're actually able to recharge your vehicle's battery as well assuming you have power to do so. And you can only do this from a battery connected here to your alternator port. The only way you're gonna be able to charge through your alternator port is like that. You cannot have the solar on at the same time. It's not gonna put power to your car battery. All right guys, so we're out here with the whole solar power system with our e-taker, DC to DC converter and charge controller. I already have everything connected as far as the solar coming in. And then this is connected to the rest of the system to be able to put power into the battery. To run solar, I just threw these two 100 watt solar panels on the ground, nothing crazy there. We're not gonna get a whole lot of power out of these because the sun's pretty low in the sky. So here's the engine bay of my truck. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put the positive lead straight to the alternator and I will ground the ground lead probably just right here on the engine. What they want you to do is connect this to your car battery. But in my case, I'm gonna put it straight to the alternator because I think I'll get better power output out of that. And also the alternator wire on this truck isn't very big. Just make sure you do it by the book, but I'm gonna put it straight to the alternator. There we go, we are all hooked up. So we have the main positive on the main positive stud of the alternator. And I just grounded it right here to the side of the engine. And that's going straight into our unit right here. And it also passes through the 60 amp fuse for safety. All right, next I'm gonna come over here to the side of the unit and go ahead and turn it on. There we go, we're turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and open my phone and get the app all set up. There we have, we have our phone app opened and right now we are charging with one watt on solar. Not a lot, but it does demonstrate that you're charging with solar, so we know that works. All right, I'm gonna set the charging voltage to start charging above 13.5, 13.6. So what that's gonna do is it's not gonna try to pull battery from our main starting battery until the alternator is actually charging. Once the alternator's voltage becomes above 13.6, then the unit's gonna start pulling power from the alternator through the power unit and into our 12 volt battery right there. What that does is gonna keep the unit from trying to pull power from your cranking battery when your engine is not running. So it's very important that you set that voltage correctly. So we have that set up. We have a max of 500 watts. We have a max of 30 amps. Now we're gonna go over to our DC port. We're gonna set our voltage to, the max charge voltage on this battery is gonna be 14.6. So do 14.5, that's fine. And that's gonna be your maximum voltage for your battery that you're trying to charge. And it is set to charge battery. You can also set it to charge power station or you can set it straight to DC output. So we have a 14.5 volts of charging current. We're gonna put at 10 amps just for testing purposes. I will do 15, confirm. So we have 14.5 volts, 15 amps on the charge battery output. So we should be good now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck up. All right, our truck is now running. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the unit. And there we go, guys. So now we are charging our battery off the alternator. So we're putting 369 watts into our 12 volt battery. All right, I just shut the truck off to show you guys that now that the truck is off, and now that we're below our minimum voltage from the alternator for our battery to charge, charging will stop automatically. So now that I have it configured like this, I can close the app out and I can just turn the unit on and off as I see fit. It will automatically charge my batteries when the vehicle's running. And when it's not running, it'll still charge off of solar power. So it'll still keep the batteries topped up and work automatically. I think that's gonna conclude testing of the E-Taker F1000. This thing is an extremely capable DC to DC converter and solar charge controller. It really bridges kind of a big gap in the camper van world because normally you either need a solar charge controller and a DC charge controller to be able to charge your batteries on the go, but this will do both, so that's really awesome. It's also awesome that you can kind of configure the ports to do a bunch of different functions. You can charge your car battery, you can run DC appliances, 
and it does bi-directional charging and all that good stuff. Because of the way the bi-directional charging works, you can really configure this to however you want. I do wish they would come out with a separate screen to where you can control everything instead of having to use your phone. I will say the phone app does work really good once you get everything installed and working. Another thing about the phone app is whatever parameters you set, it's gonna remember it in the device. So you, all you have to do is set it, set whatever device settings you want, and then you're done. You can put your phone up, and then when you turn the device on, it's automatically gonna default to whatever settings you have for your charging setup, and then you can just turn this on and off as you need it. This is really my first time diving into a piece of equipment like this. I do have some ideas for some future videos where we can actually start using this more in a real setting. Let me know what you guys think about this thing. Leave your comments and questions in the comments. If you guys are using DC to DC converters, is this thing pretty good as far as specs go? Let me know y'all's opinions. As always, I'll see you on the next video.